Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Kim and I'm really glad you're here. Today I'm going to talk about some safety issues I run into um, as a delivery driver. I do Grubhub and DoorDash. I am also an Uber Eats driver, but I don't use that app. Um, maybe I will eventually, but I don't right now. Anyways, before I get started, please subscribe. I really need some subscribers. I really want to get to 100. That would be so fantastic. Um, anyways, uh, let's get going here. So who let the dogs out? Phew, that was close. Um, and I wanted to talk about some other dangers that we face as food delivery drivers. My first one was that I want to talk about is this dog, okay? Where did that dog come from? I had a delivery to a house, had a front gate, okay? Um, it did not look like the yard, the front area of the house was attached to the backyard or anything. It was just a normal little front gate. There was some bushes and then you walked up to the door. Did not have a lock. It was just a very normal looking front gate with a little latch that you pull back and it opens. Um, yeah, there was no mention of leaving the food outside the gate in the delivery instructions. Um, there was nothing that said, don't go into the gate. The instructions said, leave on the porch. Okay, so that leads me to believe I'm gonna open the gate and walk up to the porch, right? <laughs> so I open the gate, walk towards the house, house with was just a few feet from the gate actually as I sat down the food I hear a growl I kind of jumped up a little bit um, I wasn't it was not a small dog it was a German Shepherd kind of dog you know about that size um, I look up and this dog is just coming towards me. His hair was up on the back of his neck. He was growling. Um, I have dogs, so I was not as afraid as I probably should have been. Um, I started talking to the dog. I realized this is a pet, so hopefully um, the dog would not lunge at me and bite me. And I was just saying, oh, good boy, la, 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 I'm bringing food for your mommy. No, I'm just talking to the dog. And as I'm backing out of the yard, the gate was still open, thank goodness, so I didn't have to try to open it. Um, that's another thing. The dog could have ran out the gate. They would have lost their dog. Um, anyways, um, he was not a friendly dog, I could tell. But I did get out, and I was safe. For some reason, he didn't attack me, maybe because I had food. I'm not really sure, but he easily could have. Um, so what did I do next? This was not the house, but this is a similar looking fence, just a normal gate. It did not look, you know, here's the little latch. You just open it up. There's the house right there. Um, after I was safely out of the yard, I noticed that the drink had tipped over. Oh, well, I'm not going back in there. Too bad. Probably when I jumped up, I might have knocked it over. I don't really know. I left a note in the app for the customer basically saying, sorry, I tipped your drink over, but your dog scared me. Um, and I also put this in a text. So I put it in the app, you know, the little instructions where you can say uh, where you left the food. But I also opened up a text and I basically said the same thing. And in the text, I suggested that um, she added instructions in the app next time so that the delivery person leaves the food outside the gate and doesn't go in the gate and get bit by the dog or whatever. Um, I thought that was the best solution at that time. The customer never responded to me, so I don't know if the phone number was not tied to the texting correctly or if what, I don't know. Anyways. Um, Regardless, I no longer go into gated yards at all unless I can see the whole yard and there's no way a dog could come from around a corner. So customers, keep the dogs inside, especially if you're expecting delivery. Keep your dogs inside or secure it in a backyard. Why put the delivery driver at risk? 
And like I said, if I would have left, the, I did leave the gate open actually, and he could have ran out. Um, anyways, if you can't do that, if you can't keep your dog inside, you don't have a backyard area for your dog, put a note in the delivery instructions that there's a dog and to leave the food outside the gate. Or put a sign on the gate warning us that there's a dog. Not everyone is good at reading the delivery instructions, so if there's a note or a sign on the gate, hey, beware of dog, I'm not going to open that gate. Um, you know, it's just, yeah, it could have been a disaster. It wasn't. Everything was fine. I mean, they did have a spilled drink, but um, that was the only harm that came, but it could have been way worse. And I found this uh, picture here, beware of dogs. Here's a gate. You know what? I'm not going to open that gate. There's a dog there. <laughs> but anyways, so this next uh, safety issue that I run into all the time is, hey, it's dark outside. Why don't you have lights turned on? This is a nice bright porch. They not only have a nice bright porch light, the lights are on in the house. You could easily see where to walk. You're not going to trip over the steps. And there's the door. This would be great, except for the dog. <laughs> So I can't even count how many times I pull up to a house at night. There is no porch light. Not only does it make it hard to find the house, it's very unsafe for delivery people. Um, we're carrying food and sometimes drinks and some, you know, our hands are full. You can't really carry a flashlight. Um, I do use my phone flashlight. I try, um, but sometimes your hands are full, you know, it's just difficult and it would be really nice to have some sort of lighting. My husband goes with me a lot at night, which is great. And he'll either uh, point the car lights towards the house so I can see, or he'll hold a flashlight so I can see where I'm going, which is very helpful. But, um, you know, not all of us have someone to go with us. So it's dark. We are unfamiliar with your sidewalk, your walkway, your porch. We could trip, we could slip drop your food, someone could get hurt. Um, obviously we don't want to, we're gonna try really hard not to, but if you can't see, and you can easily not notice something and trip over it. I mean, I could, I don't know. I, I haven't, luckily, knock on wood. <laughs> so just an ounce of common courtesy would be really greatly appreciated. Just turn on the porch light. You know, if you don't have a porch light, get one. They're not expensive. You can get a little battery operated one where you just press it. It doesn't even have to be, you know, hooked up to the house. You could just press it when you know someone's coming. So there's some light. And if I didn't add this in here, but um, sometimes we can't see the addresses either at night. So that would be nice if those were also lit. That's not a safety thing, but that will help us get your food to you faster. Okay. Now this happened this last weekend I had to go to a house it was not in a regular neighborhood it was in a more rural area this is not the house I was just trying to find a picture that kind of looked like it but they had um, a long driveway through trees and you kind of had to wind around and the house was way back over here so from the street you couldn't even see the house and it was also up a hill, the one I had to go up. And it made me feel uneasy. I almost asked the person to meet me down at the bottom, but instead I decided to drive up. Um, I don't know. When you have these really long driveways, what do you do? I don't know. It was kind of scary. Not. It was the middle of the day. But you just don't know what's on the other side. Anyways. I realize the customer can't do much about it, but I wanted to know what you guys think a good strategy is for the situation. So you drive down these long random driveways. Um, I, drive, I drove up and I parked as close to the house as I could. Um, not that that really would help if something bad was going to happen, but I felt like I could quickly drop off the food and get in my car and then leave. <laughs> I hate to think the worst of people and I hate that we have to worry about these things, but I'm a woman, older woman, middle age, I don't know, whatever. And, uh, you know, I can't run real fast and I can't, I need to think about these things. I need to think about what 
danger am I putting myself in? Okay, this was a very, very nice house. Once I got up there, I'm like, wow, these people are very wealthy. The chances of something happening are very slim, but you just never know. Okay, so I just wanted to um, bring this up because I've run into it before and it always makes me a little bit uneasy. Typically, I don't park in anyone's driveway. I'll park on the street. Um, not even if I'm just going to be there a minute. But in these situations, I definitely drive up the driveway. Or sometimes it's just not even out of safety, but sometimes it's a really long, steep driveway, and I don't want to walk up it, so um, it's a lot easier to drive up it. So a lot of times, that times, I'll, you know, I'll also do that. But, um, but these hidden things where you don't really know where the house is, and it's, anyways, it was just, it was just uh, something I thought I'd bring up just because it just happened. It's fresh in my mind. Now, here's the typical list of potential safety hazards So, and things you should do to keep yourself safe. Beware of your surroundings. If you feel unsafe, stay in your car or leave. You know what? If you have to decline an offer and say, hey, I just didn't feel safe, call support and tell them, you know what? They'll take care of it for you. Don't put yourself in unnecessary danger. Always lock your car, take your keys, and keep your phone in your hand. Um, I read this somewhere um, that if you put your key through your fingers, you could use it like to like stab someone if they were gonna attack you. <laughs> um, I do that sometimes if I feel like, especially like in apartment buildings for some reason, if I'm walking around and it's not a lot of visibility, I'll put my key like that. I don't know, I'm not gonna be able to, I doubt I'm gonna be able to stab anybody, but it makes me feel a little safer. And um, you know, I always have my phone right there in my hand too, so I could easily call for help if needed. Or like, what if you fall too? I was thinking about that. You could fall down, break your leg or something, and you need to have your phone, you know, ready to call for help. Now, we use our phones to take pictures of the delivery sometimes, but I know a lot of people say they leave their phone in their car. You know, if it's not a, you know, especially if it's like a hand it to me or something, and they're not going to need to take a picture, they leave their phone in their car. I don't know. I always have my phone in my hand. Even when I'm just taking my dogs for a walk anywhere, you know, just because you just never know when you're going to need to call someone. Anyways, okay, on and move on. Uh, pepper spray, bear spray is a good thing to have on your keychain. Um, once again, just to keep yourself safe. A dog could come at you. Um, I don't know, coyote, a evil person, <laughs> a bear. I don't know, depending on where you live, who knows what could be coming at you. Um... Another thing to do is do not engage with an angry customer. Apologize and just maybe walk away and get in your car and drive away. Don't argue with them. Don't agree to do anything. Just ask them to call support if they need support. I don't really know what you should say, but don't engage them. Don't argue. Don't make it a confrontational thing. Just be as sweet as you can and walk away. Don't be in such a rush that you drive carelessly. You don't want to get in an accident. You don't want to hit someone or something. The food needs to get to the destination in a timely manner, but you also need to be safe. Park legally. Don't block fire hydrants or other people's cars. Oh my gosh. So this happened. Okay, I saw there was a car that was parked I had to go to a condo complex and there was no parking. I just kept driving around until I found a spot. But I saw so many cars parked behind other people in their spots. If those people needed to leave, they were not going to be able to. Um, it was crazy and all these signs everywhere says, no double parking, your car's gonna be towed, this, that, and the other thing. But obviously everybody was parking like that. I don't know if those were all delivery people or if the, those were people in that particular apartment that are blocking their own car. I don't really know, but I was like, wow, this is crazy. I didn't do it because uh, I didn't want my car towed or anything, but um, yeah, anyways, and don't park block fire hydrants either. I think that's highly illegal and you get a very big ticket. Um, walking up to a house is a risk. You can slip, trip, fall. 
as independent contractors, we are not entitled to the workman's comp, so you'd have to hire an attorney if your injury was the fault of a homeowner's neglect, a dangerous walkway or whatever. Um, you have no built-in protections. So just walk carefully. Just look where you're going, you know, and just try really hard to be safe. I know it's, we all don't want to get hurt, but I know people rush and people will, I've seen so many people run with their bag of food up to the house. And it's like, oh my God, just slow down. So take an extra minute, be safe, take care of yourself. Don't walk across yards, stay on the walkways, you know, just all the normal things that we tell our children. Just be safe. Okay. And I wanted to know if you had any other safety issues that we can discuss anything I forgot or you want to add to anything that I said if you disagree with anything I said you know list all those comments below I love reading the comments and um, anyways thanks for watching and see you next time don't forget to subscribe